Is NHL Sensorino worth the cost? You know what? Let's talk about that. Let's be honest. Hockey is not cheap. An extra ice time can cost over $150 an hour, and hockey camps cost hundreds. With NHL Sense Arena, you're getting access to hundreds of drills and training plans starting at $33 a month, where you can practice on a schedule that works for you. And new content is constantly added to the game. From new arenas to practice in, weekly challenges with their season mode, and new drills like the recently released USA Hockey training plans, this is such a great training tool for any hockey player or goalie. While hockey is definitely expensive, this is just over a dollar a day. So, what are you waiting for? Level up your off-ice hockey training with NHL Sense Arena. And remember, gang, for listeners of Our Kids Play Hockey programming, we're offering $50 off an annual plan. Just head over to hockey.sensearena.com and use the code HockeyNeverStops at checkout. Again, that's hockey.sensearena.com. Use our code HockeyNeverStops at checkout and take your child's off-ice training to a new reality with NHL Sense Arena 25. Now, let's get you into this episode on the Our Kids Play Hockey Network. Hello, hockey skaters and goalies around the world, and welcome back to another edition of the Ride to the Rink. Got another Olympian and pro athlete here today. Haley Skamora is joining us to talk to you directly about mental fitness and mental health when it comes to being a young hockey player and how she believes she would have benefited by getting some help in that realm as a kid. She shares all of that with you right now. Take a listen. Haley, you talked about mental fitness in our larger episode this week and how it's something you dove into in college and into your Olympic career and professional career and how profound that was for you. You also had mentioned that it's something you wish you had tapped into earlier in your youth hockey journey. So the question I have for you and the children is uh, if you could talk to yourself now at whatever age you want, it could, you know, 10, 11, 12, a, what, what would you tell yourself? And then to the audience, what can they do to dive on this mental fitness journey early as well? I would tell my 10 year old self that it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to have an off game an off shift. It happens to, every player at every single level. Uh, I would tell myself if I've come off of a bad shift, take a few deep breaths, visualize what you kind of want yourself to do on that next shift. Maybe focus on one thing that you're really good at and that's like your bread and butter. Uh, so for me, that was my battle. So I would say, okay, I'm going to win my board battle on this next shift and then uh, just go out there and have fun and compete. So... No, it, it's a great answer. And I, I think, too, that <clears throat> that internal dialogue, right, when we think about mm -hmm. when you're a kid, and for the kids listening, internal dialogue is the voices you kind of hear in your head. It makes it sound crazy, but you have thoughts that say, go harder, you're not good enough, I'm great, I suck, that kid's better than me, I can't make the team. These thoughts are in your head. And when you're a young kid, you're still learning to control these thoughts so that they don't control you. Can you talk about the process of getting your emotions under control? Because we all have emotion. And it's not something you should try and live without. It's part of our human psyche. But again, talking to the youth hockey players, what are some things they can do to work on controlling those emotions so that they don't control them? I think realizing how important your self-talk is. Um, I recently read a book that's like the way you talk to yourself and – um, how important that is and what it programs. So most of the time, if you're not aware of it, you're speaking negatively about yourself in your head. And if you realize that and you're able to kind of twist that and turn it into a positive and say something positive about yourself to yourself, it will change how you're playing in the game. Because if you're talking negatively to yourself, you're not going to be playing very confident. You're not going to be trying new things on the ice. You're not going to be making plays. You're going to be timid. You're going to grip your stick too tight. Uh, but if you're saying, I'm a great player, I'm capable, I'm, you know, all these positive things, you're going to go out there and feel more confident and play more confident. That's a phenomenal answer. I'll say here too, just to add on to that, because this is something I don't think we tell people enough. And this is true for adults as well, kids, that it's, it's a little bit of fake it till you make it. I, it's not my favorite <laughs> phrase, but when you say I'm a great hockey player, inevitably there might be another voice that says, no, you're not. Right. Mm. And, and that that battle will happen in your head and you have to work on quieting really both voices at the end of the day and just being as present as possible. But listen to the positive voice. Tell yourself those positive messages, because if you don't, that negative voice will just continue to take over. 
it will not do you any favors. It, it's a it's a flight or fight response. We'll get into that when you're older. But the point is, is that you, you have to work on that mental side and helping those emotions um, be under control. Last question uh, from me, Haley, for the audience. I think when you're young, and th this was something that would dawned on me not too long ago, when you're feeling something, it could be excitement, it could be elation, it could be not feeling so good. I don't think when you're young, you realize that feeling isn't going to last forever, right? Mm -hmm. You've had amazing highs and lows as a professional hockey player, as an international player, as a collegiate player. Can you talk a little bit about maybe some of the feelings that you felt in those highs and lows? And then just understanding that they, they will pass. They, that none of them last forever, right? You have you eventually have to move on to the next moment. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, you know, like a, a big low for me was losing the Olympic gold medal game. Uh, but, you know, it lasted for maybe a day. And then you realize, like, not everyone gets a medal at the Olympics. And it's pretty incredible that I have an Olympic silver medal. Um, and so you eventually kind of get to the point where you're excited to show that off. You're excited to share that with people. And, um, you know, for me, I've realized that like, I, I visited like my grandma's assisted living with the medal and I would show it to all the, you know, the residents there. And they were like, I've never held one before. Like, this is incredible. And they were just so excited. And they're like, we're so proud of you. I'm like, thank you. Like, you know, and so you just kind of realize, um, you may have been sad in that moment, but then how much joy it has brought in my life, like later on. Um, and then for the highs, yeah, there it's exciting when it happens, but then, you know, the next day you're like, okay, what's next. And like, maybe you're not fully enjoying like that present moment. So, um, you know, appreciate it. And then it's, you're just kind of onto the next. So don't put too much weight and expectation on yourself to get to those moments. Yeah. You know, it, it sounds like the common thread between the highs and the lows is gratitude is that you're, you're mm -hmm. experiencing gratitude at both of them. And that, that, that is, maybe the gateway through it, right? It's just finding what you're grateful for from every experience. So I'll tell you what, I'm grateful for this experience. Uh, you've been a wonderful guest to have on here today. Um, again, we're humbled by your presence and bow before you for all the things you've accomplished in the game. <laughs> Haley Skimora, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, and kids, thanks so much for listening. Remember, on the Ride to the Rank, it's all about you. If you have a question that you want us to discuss or you want us to ask a pro athlete like Haley Skimora, uh, you can text this, kids. There's a link accompanying this episode on your phone or your parents' phone. If you tap that, you can send us a message. Or you can email us, team at ourkidsplayhockey.com. We love getting questions from the audience. But without further ado, that's going to end this one of the Ride to the Rink. Thank you so much for listening. We're wishing you the best week in hockey ever. Remember, we believe in you. You should, too. Let's see you on the next Ride to the Rink. Skate on, everybody.